Hello everyone and welcome to a special Roker Report Extra in association with Sunderland Community Soup Kitchen uh, where today we have another opportunity to get the perspective from our next opponents as we are joined by the Commercial Director of AFC Wimbledon which of course is Ivor Heller. Welcome Ivor. Good evening, how are you? Yeah, I'm not bad, I'm not bad, thanks. By my reckoning, I think you're collecting your Roker Report match ball today and this is the third the third time you've joined us is that right yeah 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 i'm i'm sure it's the third time at least but but yeah you know, i've got i've got quite an affinity with uh with sunderland you know, I, I i've said it before you know our home game at king's meadow was one of my favorite ever games even though you beat us which was a, a travesty um <laughs> the actual day itself was was a right laugh looking after the sunderland fans that we could was was one of the highlights of of my commercial career actually that they were we just had a riot right from start to finish and and it was really really nice so uh, i can't wait to get you guys down to uh plow lane and give you a proper wimbledon welcome yeah yeah we're gonna have to think about something when people join us for a third time you know some sort of uh memento or match ball or something we'll have to send people but a rosette uh, yeah yeah well i think the last time you joined us i think was uh august 2019 which uh, for, for quite a few reasons seems like a lifetime ago, because well, it's fair to say one or two things have happened. I, I mean, yeah, I suppose it's always going to be the starting point, but because it's so relevant for so much I want to talk about, I do want to start with the kind of COVID-19 situation. And especially from the perspective of a club like yourselves, who've made huge strides to get where you are. I mean, what has been the impact on AFC Wimbledon over the last 12 months? Well, I mean, it's fairly typical at Wimbledon. We've never really done things the easy way. We've always done things in, in, in a way where people say, it's amazing, it's incredible, overachieving, all the plaudits and everything. But but it's so typical of, uh, of us having been in the wilderness for 30 years away from our home conurbation and to get all this way and then trying to build a stadium in the middle of a pandemic and then get into that stadium in the middle of a pandemic is just incredible. And I've said it many times, it, you know, it, it's like we've been in the wilderness for 30 years now we've got to the gates of uh, of Nirvana, where we where, where we want to be, except we can't come in. <laughs> you can't come in. So it is. It's to say it, it's painful at the moment for right. It's painful for the whole country. And it's painful for everyone that's missing their football and everything. But I think for some of our fans that have, have never had the chance to go to our our new ground, it's probably just that tantalising a little bit more right now and and it really is very tough to Mm. take but i'm buoyed by the fact that the future is positive for us Uh, we will get through this covid crisis the country will get through this covid crisis and we will come out and i just hope that we're better people on the other side i really do Mm. And, and that goes right into the whole of our society i think our society is reflected in football i don't know what 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 you think about that Mm. but but i think what's you know what i've noticed and, and please interrupt me at any time. But what I've noticed is on Facebook, uh, and I don't look at guest books very much, but I, I probably read more about Sunderland on, on guest books and Facebook that I try not to look at the Wimbledon ones because it drives me mad. <laughs> but 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 when I when I do stray onto the, the Facebook page, the vitriol of some people, I think it's worse than it used to be. I think that the way people talk about things and circumstances, they don't think about scratching below the surface at all to understand why things might be the way they are and give people a little bit of a break. And I just hope that after this is all over, that there could be a little bit more of a move back towards, you know, people understanding that a football club and being part of a football club, is not just about winning matches and how far up the leagues you can get. It's about actually being part of a community, about being part of something. And to me, you know, I've followed Wimbledon from the Premier League and winning the FA Cup all the way back down to the Combined Counties League, which would be the equivalent of the North East Counties League, I guess. You know, level nine, playing at, at places that I'd never even heard of, even though I only live half an hour away from them. You know, it, it was like you know, a football ground with a fence and a pitch and some floodlights, and that's it. That's what you need. You know, that's where we went. Did I enjoy it? Yeah, not half. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. We all enjoyed it because we went down there in large numbers. We felt like, like Sunderland do when they're travelling around this league, the biggest club in it by miles. Sorry, all you Pompey fans that think you're as big as Sunderland, but we all know you're not really. <laughs> <laughs> you know it makes yeah, sense. Yeah. You know it does. <laughs> um, I just really hope that some people will take a little look at it and go, we're going to football, we're following our team. You know, you've got no God-given right to automatically get out of a division or automatically stay in a division. And I mean, 
you know, when you look at what Wickham did last year uh, and you look where they are now, but what they'd achieved last season, never mind the fact of how they got promoted or whatever, what they achieved last season was insane for a club the size of Wickham. Absolutely insane. It's brilliant. Look what Accrington are doing now. You know, how on earth can Accrington be above Sunderland? How can it be? Yeah. It, may, it doesn't make it any sense, except that they've got a better team. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason, however it's happened, you know, it's the same as how did Wimbledon win the FA Cup? You know, how did that happen? Well, you know, we won the FA Cup. What people forget is that you know, we finished sixth in the first division. Yeah. Six. We did, we did the double over Man United. We, we beat Liverpool at Anfield. Although we, I recently talked to a, a player that said if we'd have gone 1-0 down, we probably would have lost 6-0. <laughs> <laughs> I can't disagree with a, with a word you've said. I mean, I, I just don't think I hold out as much hope as you for, for after all this. I, I've got a feeling it's going to be exactly the same, especially in terms of social media. Well, as, as I said, it's a hope. Mm. And I, one of the things that I, I, I do passionately believe is that football mirrors society. So at the moment, in our fan base and in every fan base, there seems to be a a split. You know, you've got left wing and you've got right wing. (laughs) By the way, I think at their extremes, they meet bang in the middle. And they seem to be looking for aggravation amongst each other. And when you've got someone that that, that is so radical that a manager that loses a game after two matches should be sacked, and then you've got everyone else standing there going, no, 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 it's a bed of roses and it's, you know, it's that and the other. And they, they seem to be at it with each other right from the start, mm. I, I, and which I find some of it a little bit, um, I find some of it a little bit depressing, to be honest yeah. with you. And I, I really hope that some of these extremes start to, to stop and think about who they're talking to and why they're saying it the way they're saying it. Because I think social media is going to, gonna. I think in, in 20 years' time, we're all going to look back and say, look how we used to behave. I mean, speaking of, you know, social media reaction and reaction to decisions, just to quickly go back to the decisions to abandon the fixture list last season. Did you kind of agree with that? And then kind of just to move forward and then to keep it rolling this season? Because, I mean, just looking in terms of numbers and situations, I mean, on paper, we're kind of in a worse position now than we were when the league stopped last season. But there seems to be a, a more of an effort now to, to carry the season on than, you know, when it was to to stop a dead then, which, you know, experience might come into that. But I was just wondering what your thoughts are on the, the stopping it and keeping it going now. I can tell you now that, that from a point of view of stopping the season last season, I, I, I was very much in favour of that. We didn't know what we were dealing with with the virus, first of all. And secondly, from a club the size of us, we, we were running on empty. And we, you know, the, the sheer cost of trying to keep all the testing up that we had to do. We had to pay for the testing ourselves. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot of money for a club like us. And they were talking about about two, possibly three times a week testing, you know, uh, and every time that was that. And it was like, where was the money going to come from for us to be able to operate this way? We did not know how to operate. To convert the training ground into a a COVID-friendly training ground, you know, we had to take on an extra member of staff to do all of this stuff. You know, there's been the whole host of things that we didn't know how to do when it first started. And then... The biggest problem of the lot was contracts. You know, the contracts were basically up. At our level, we, we, a lot of our players moved on when their contracts were up. We would have been playing with uh, half a kids team. And so we, you know, people kept talking about integrity and, and so on. And, you know, the tournament's integrity. Well, where's the integrity in that? There, there wasn't any. I was a, a big believer in that, that the season should have been stopped. As much as I'm a massive believer that the season shouldn't be stopped this time around. Mm, yeah. And... and, and I've got reasons for that. I mean, how difficult is it to, to stay within the remit and restrictions that the EFL kind of imposed to keep playing? Because, I mean, just going from um, our experience from, from looking in from the outside, I mean, it didn't look crystal clear what the clubs were meant to do. I mean, if you look back in December before our game at the Stadium of Light, I mean, you'd kind of think that the advice would be if you have a positive case, then the game should be cancelled, future ones assessed. But it, it doesn't look as simple as that. No, it's not. And, and I mean, just to put it into perspective, that day when we were coming up to you, yeah, that was a very interesting day. We kind of found out that there was, a, a kind of, I think it was kind of worded to us as it was a, a possible COVID outbreak at Sunderland. That's before we got on the train to come up there. <laughs> and it was just like, ah, what do we do? What do we do? But, you know, we got told that, you know, get on the train. We got on the train and up we came. And, uh, and yeah, it was a very difficult, a very mm-hmm. difficult situation. But for, for you guys and for us, because we didn't quite know what was going to be going on. We already had COVID in the team. The problem that we found with it and the way that they dealt with it is, and it, it has really annoyed me what happened to us because I think they, 
they put the skids on our season when we were doing really well. We had to play 10 games in 28 days. We had to. I mean, we had a schedule. Listen to this for a schedule. I mean, you know, you, you, when, you, when you, you hear the big teams moaning and so on, <laughs> it, it really does. It gets my goat at because we came back from COVID on the, a few of them were back on the Thursday, but most were back on the Friday. On the Friday, we travelled to Rochdale. Right? We played Rochdale on the Saturday. We played Gillingham on the Tuesday. We played Barrow, and you know where Barrow is because mm. it's up your neck of the woods and turn left, isn't it? <laughs> and keep going until you fall off the end of the country. Biggest cul-de-sac in, in the world. Then we played Crawley on the Cup on Sunday. So that was on the Thursday we played Barrow. Let's come back on the Friday. You know, I, I mean, it was utterly ridiculous. Then we played Peterborough on, on the Wednesday. You know, and you kind of like like the, the, the that's utterly insane to play that many games in that many days. And just just by the way, we've got the youngest. It might be now the second youngest squad in in the league. Mm. That really destroyed our first half of the season after that mm. because you know we haven't recovered. We've got injuries, and then we got COVID again. So so now the first lot that had it were okay, but we got it again, and we landed up playing Lincoln the other week. We had. It was 13 players out, 13 senior players out. I, I, but we had to play them. We still yeah. had to play. So, so how the rules actually work, I don't know. Yeah. We don't know. I think it's a magic number. <laughs> oh, no, I think it is. That's what it is. You, you have to have enough players left in your squad. And as long as the protocols are okay, you, know, you have to play. Yeah. From the outside, I don't quite understand you know, how football is kind of functioning like that. Because obviously you're here in workplaces, schools, I mean, whatever, you know one case and it's you know everybody's saying right everyone's got to self-isolate whereas it appears with football clubs if there's a case they want to reach a tipping point before they say right okay then, then well then i think we- with the football clubs what it is providing you follow following protocols when you're traveling and you know we've been very strict with our lads and try to make them do everything that you should be doing you know to the point where we actually when we came to sunderland we, we brought our covid officer with us uh, uh, and we we caught the train from durham the next morning and you know he, he was stood outside the station making sure that everyone had their masks on properly. Mm. You know, that kind of thing. If people abide by the rules, my personal opinion is that having gone through the lockdowns that we've gone through, if they take elite sport away, again now, and it would be a blanket elite sport, if they take it away now, I am mentally going to suffer beyond belief. Mm. And, and I think there's, there are countless millions that fit into that. You know, I, mm. I just don't know how I cope. Yeah, That's yeah. me. Yeah, you know, I think I'm quite a, a settled person. Um, I, 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 you know, eventually, it's taken me 57 years to become reasonably sensible. And some would say that I'm not that, but you know, <laughs> I, I'm probably reasonably sensible these days. And I just think that the damage it would do to the country would be immense if, if we stopped elite sport. It's just my opinion. I know that upsets some people, no. but that's just the way that, that I genuinely see it. My mental health will suffer, yeah. and I know that. Well, I mean, in in effort to to keep it rolling, I mean, as clubs, do you think you're getting the support and direction to navigate your way through it? And when I make, when I say that, I mean, obviously, there's the financial aspect because we've had those recent inputs from the the PFA. Um, but from the point of view that you know the 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 rules that need to be followed, that you completely agree and understand with us, because I I saw Grimsby Town. I mean, they were the first club the other day to be punished for for breaking those rules. So. I mean, is everything clear for you to follow? I think it's really difficult to follow it. And I think it's difficult for everyone to follow it. And people will make mistakes and people have made mistakes. And, and, and that is as simple as that. Now, you know, some will have tried to, to, to cover stuff up and some will have got caught. And that, that's all there is to it. There is no other, um, you know, I'll be very surprised if there's anyone that's flagrantly breaking those rules on purpose to try and gain an advantage or to try mm. and, keep games going or whatever on some kind of misguided tomfoolery to, mm. to, 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 to keep things going. I think that a lot of players have had it and I think that that is a fair chance now that we'll get through this. You know, the vaccine's starting and I think we should definitely keep it going. That's yeah. my honest opinion. I mean, in terms of getting through it, I mean, do you think it's inevitable that we might end up having kind of circuit breaks in the season, you know, for a couple of weeks, a month? Or do you think actually because of there seems to be I mean you talked about the fixtures you had to play. I mean a lot of teams have getting this fixture backlog and if more teams can't play, do you think it might end up in an extension of the league, you know, going into June, maybe even longer? That wouldn't surprise me at our level. That wouldn't surprise me if if, if that did happen. 
you know, I, I prefer not to have the circuit breakers now. I, I think that that do anybody any favours. I mean, what do you do? You, see, you tell the players, you, you, you go, OK, we're going to stop for a month. But in two weeks' time, you've got to come back and train. Yeah. You know, actually, the part that I think has been safest has been when I've gone to any games, right. actually attending the games, because it's all done in zones. You know, so the amber zone, I, I, you know, when we came to Sunderland, it was just the weirdest thing being in the stadium and like with 15 people was just yeah. like, oh my word. <laughs> that, was, that was strange. So, you know, uh, the actual stadiums themselves, I don't feel, I feel that they are really well done and, and the protocols are, 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 are very stringently adhered to it. everywhere we've been, they have been anyway. And, and you're also, for the majority of the time you're there, you're sitting outside. Mm. So that would, that makes sense to me. So, yeah, I, I think that, that, that that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's where I am with it. Well, especially when you've got all that space, when you're on your own at the stadiums, you've got all, you know, you can do what you want. But I mean, speaking of stadiums, um, you mentioned that, that you've had this extra kind of, well, I want to say a burden, but it's it, I'm not sure it's been a burden for you. They're kind of this, you know, finishing this fantastic uh, new stadium, which of course is called Plough Lane after the original. And it's, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, it's on the land that would have essentially been next door to the, the original ground. Yeah, we're, um, we're about 150 yards down the road. And in point of fact, we played on more or less the exact site in, in, in 2013. I'm sorry, in 1913, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there is a, we have got some uh, historical claim in Baldry, where we, where, where, where we are. So, uh, yeah, it's unbelievable to come home. Yes, because you had a couple of delays for a couple of reasons, I think, even before COVID kicked in. But um, um, how was how how has that been to to kind of deal with through the pandemic? Was was there ever any doubt? Was kind of work did work stop for a while? Did you have to keep it going? No, we, we, this work work has never stopped on it, mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, you know, that that that's incredible. Yeah, you know, we, we we lost some time, um, and and most of that time was lost because of supplies, not not actual the building work. You know, mm-hmm. there there was there was some slowdowns in the uh, in the supply chain, and that that they are. You know, pain in the ass, but it, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, mm. you, have to, you have to get on with it. Um, but it's, you know, I, I think our stadium is, is pretty much a miracle stadium. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it is, you know, and people will, will know that it's a, it's a bit special because of the circumstances it's come about. You know, never mind the fact that we as fans raised, you know, basically best part of 10 million of it ourselves. Um, and the rest of it was done through very clever business. Yeah. Well, well, actually, speaking about being clever, I was reading up about it um, and it seems like you've been quite conscious and clever of building it to kind of suit your needs and capability now with kind of the intention of saying, well, you know, if the club progresses, you've almost got that ready to just kind of extend as and when you need to. No, that, that is absolutely the way it is. You know, it, it's been designed that way. You know, the most important thing for us as, as Wimbledon fans, having been uh, properly shafted once, is that we don't get shafted twice. Mm. Now, the fact that it's taken us 30 years to stop being getting shafted, uh, it's, uh, you know, that's a long old ride one way and another. You know? <laughs> uh, it really is, um, yeah, it, it's pretty future-proof, the ground. So, so you yeah, we've got one main stand that's got all the facilities in. We've got amazing banqueting facilities, and ma- absolutely incredible. Um, I, I really, really worked hard to get those. And, and, and you know, that was, that was extra money that... that you know, someone have said you didn't, you don't need, but we do need it because it, that way we'll, we'll get the extra income and that will be our our uh, our cash cow going forward with a bit of luck. Mm. Um, if we can ever rent it for a function, <laughs> <or anything. laughs> yeah, yeah, oh dear, I'm sure it'll come round. Uh, but it, 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 that'll all come back. We, 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 it, it'll happen. So the rest of it is uh, semi permanent stands, so so temporary stands, <laughs> mm. semi permanent or temporary, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, <laughs> But, but we're doing some fantastic stuff around the ground. Uh, 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 and, you know, it's completely enclosed the ground as well, which is really nice. It's got a really lovely feel to it. People that have come along are like, oh, wow, you know, this, this is really nice. Um, uh, and, you know, we just can't wait to get everybody in properly and uh, uh, and, and crack on. Yeah, because I was, I was looking at this and um, I saw that the, the last game at the original Plough Lane was uh, 4th of May, 1991. Exactly. Um, Crystal Palace, wasn't it? Didn't you? You get it was three nil defeat, wasn't yeah, we, it? We, we, we got whacked three nil by <laughs> I, I, Ian Wright, yeah, <laughs> who became yeah. Ian wrong for us after that. Obviously, <laughs> you know, most of us didn't know that that was our last game at Plough Lane. Yeah. Some rumours, but it was before the internet really kicked yeah. in and everything. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, because I mean, fourth of May, if it was almost kind of thirty years almost to the day, it's possible that uh, towards the end of the season that you could almost get a decent crowd in. Possibly, fingers crossed, almost thirty years to the day, which would be uh, something pretty special. It would be, yes, it, it, it would be. You know, as long as I think it would be particularly special if it's with the absolute sure knowledge that that come the start of the next season, we're going to be able to let everybody in. Mm. Yeah, yeah, or, or, or the vast majority of everybody. I think that that that's what we're what I'm focused on, and what I'm hoping is the case. Because you know, someone said to me earlier, a really good friend of mine said, you know, I won't be happy if it's only half full. Mm. And I'm mm. like, do you know what? I would I would have agreed with that until I went to to Charlton when we played Charlton. Uh, they had two thousand fans in, and, and crikey, it felt like they had. 10,000 in there. They really, they really, really got behind the team. They really enjoyed their day. And it, it felt like being back at football again. There was some <laughs> brats sitting behind us talking a load of nonsense. As <laughs> yeah, you do. I remember, well, I remember <laughs> that old feeling of sitting there going, no, I don't, don't say anything back to me. You know, uh, you know, absolute garbage he was talking, but it was brilliant that he was doing that and that I was listening to it and trying not to react. And he's like, now that's what football's all about. Yeah. You know, I love that banter. I love I love the fact of, you know, I was talking a load of bollocks. You yeah. know, I love the fact that we can be like that together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just on that kind of progression, I mean, we've talked to, to Fleetwood Town uh, Chairman Andy Pelly, who had a kind of a similar rise, you know, at Fleetwood. Pretty amazing journey. I mean, this is your fifth season in the third tier. Um, which is the same amount of time you spent in League Two, which is the longest you've spent at any level uh, yeah. since kind of 2002. But it, it's it's funny because I've been kind of obviously reading and, and kind of seeing you talk and listening to you. But whenever I hear you talk about the future at Wimbledon, I always hear you always talking about making the next step to the next level. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, is that is that part, that, that way of thinking being kind of part of the reason why you just climbed so quickly, so many promotions? Is it five promotions in nine years or something? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it was five promotions in nine years. Yeah, I mean, in a non-league, nothing scared us. And to start with, we we, we, we were a, a, a ridiculously big fish in, a, in in quite a small pond, to, to, to be fair. And it, once we got out of the Ryman Premier and into the conference, you know, the big step was getting getting out of Conference South first time. And then it took us two years to get out of the conference and back into the league. So nine years from start to back in the league was was was... Yeah, that, that that was pretty miraculous, to be mm, honest. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty damn miraculous, especially seeing as we weren't doing it with being funded by anybody. We were doing it at Kings Meadow, and I don't know if you ever went to Kings Meadow at no, all. No. My word, yo, we, we, you stop and think that we the, the teams that we we welcomed down there, and they all loved it. By the way, the people that came, and I know there'll be people listening here that that, that came down there, and they, they they did enjoy themselves. I can assure you, um, it really wasn't fit for purpose, particularly for the away fans. It was all, um, but. Uh, yeah, it was home. It had a certain quaintness about it, and we we managed to look after people. And yeah, you know, I mean, when, when we played Sunderland last time, Sunderland fans were allowed in our bar. Mm. You know, I, I, and I can remember that, that a lot of our lot had a right laugh with a lot of your lot, and that that's that's exactly how it, our football should be. Mm. And we we managed to engender that kind of atmosphere and that kind of feeling, and it and it was lovely and uh, and brilliant. But you know. Uh, Coming down to the new ground, it'll be a different experience, but but yeah. we'll try and make it just as homely and welcoming, and that's what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I mean, just kind of, uh, yeah, it's kind of on that theme, but I want to talk, you know, about that cam- community kind of feel to the club. I want to touch on the ownership of AFC Wimbledon because obviously, with a recent takeover at Sunderland, it's kind of a, a main talking point up here at the minute um, in terms of how clubs are set up, and you have a setup whereby the the, the Don's Trust, which is a supporters group. Um, is pledged to retain at least seventy five percent control of AFC WPLC. Is that's that is right. that st- is that still the state? Is that how it is at the moment? That is absolutely the way it is at the moment. Yes, it is. Mm. You know, uh, the the trust. You know, and, and bear bear in mind that that, that uh, myself and Chris Stewart are the two guys that bought the limited company when we first started the club, uh, and we then sold that to the trust um, for exactly what we paid for it, which was a. Uh, a, a mighty one pound each. <laughs> uh, so so, so we sold it for one pound each. Uh, I don't think I'm still waiting for that pound. You know, <laughs> twenty pence pieces. I'm not sure really. Um, and, and that kind of set the the ownership scheme on its way. But when we needed to raise money, we said we sold some equity. But we the rules were put in that, that the equity would ne- never go above twenty five percent. And that that way, no matter who owns that twenty five percent, 
if someone came in and bought all those shares up, they would have no more power than one member of the Don's Trust. Yeah. You know, one man, one vote. Um, and, and that's really important. Although, you know, there, there are people and there are ways that, that you might be able to pick up on the, the German um, route yeah. where they go 51%. Um, the most important thing is to make sure that the givens are givens. You can never sell the ground. You can't change the colours. You can't change the name. You can't change the badge. Um, and, and there are certain things that, that have to be absolutely sacrosanct. And, and who knows if it's going to stay like that in the future? Yeah, we might we might drift out of League One and then struggle to get back because we can't raise the money or you know, stuff like that could be really challenging. Yeah, but you know we we will um, one day every club suffers a relegation. So one day we're either going to going to settle down in League One a bit more and then um, get ourselves up. And when we get ourselves up, you know, the likely it is at some stage we'll get ourselves down again. But then we've been saying that every single step of the way ever since, and uh, uh, you know, touch wood and blah blah, it's never happened. And and, and I believe that 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 you know, uh, yeah, well, I think we'll be all right this season. Um, but but it's going to be a battle. You know, our, our next couple of games are very difficult. Yeah, you know, we've got we've got you and then we've got Pompey. <laughs> I'll, I'll come back to that, <laughs> but um. I mean, yeah, because I'm assuming it hasn't so far, but, you know, I assume it hasn't kind of caused any issues along the way as you've progressed up that. You well, know, no, it that... did. No, we, we, we had, a, we had a, a, a monster situation just over a year ago where we ran out of money. Hmm. Uh, we ran out of money to, to, to finish the ground off. That's, that, that's what actually happened. And it's quite legendary that, that, that kind of three of our fans got together and, and organised something called the, the Plough Lane Bond. We basically needed 13 million and we, and we, we couldn't really borrow all of that money we raised some of it through cedars through a, a, another share issue but that wasn't enough and then yeah you know, basically the fans got wind of the fact that three guys had come in and wanted to put some money in but they wanted to change the way things work which would have left us open to, to mm. losing fan ownership yeah you know they weren't saying they were going to do that but it would have left us open so yeah. eventually it, it would have happened Someone would have, they'd have seen what we were doing at Plough Lane and come through the door and go, we'd have some fun with this, which, yeah. is, which, which, which is true. Um, and when that, that became raised as a real possibility, the, the, the bond was set up and basically it raised, the bond raised 5.4 million, 5.4 million. And, and, and the beauty of that, and this is the bit where, where um, it is stunning. The idea, of the, the thing with the bond was, okay, you can earn more interest from us than you can from your bank or your building society at the moment. But this is what we're going to do. It's five, 10 or 20 year terms. And the interest rate, you can have anything from 0% to 4%. Right? Anything from 0% to 4%. Now, you know how much it would cost to borrow five and a half million. It's a lot of money, mm-hmm. a lot of interest there. The average interest on the 5.4 million was 2%. 2%. Yo, know, that's nuts. That is nuts. So people, human beings, <laughs> put their money in and said, I don't want the interest. or I'll just take 1% or I'll just take 2%. They've literally gone, is our money. Mm. That's, that is, that's beyond anything I've ever heard of in football before. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that is why yeah, when you talk about you're going to a fan stadium, you genuinely are going to a fan stadium. You know? And then you know, one of the things that happened after that is, is that, that, because that, that I think really shocked a lot of people. But one of the, uh, one of the guys who was looking to, to do that, that, buying um came in and said look I, i'm i'm game for this i, I don't want any control I'll, I'll 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 fling two and a half in anyway I did that so you know all of a sudden we've gone we've got 5.4 we've got um two and a half from the the cedars thing you have minus some costs and everything and then two and a half from from the other guy and then the the balance we just managed to to to, to borrow a few quid you know about four <laughs> yeah uh, but but that's like a mortgage on a stadium you know we, yeah. we know that we, we, we we've got debt but ev- every club's got debt you know you just you just have to build it in and operate smart and that's what we're going to do we will operate smart and uh you know if it means we're a league one club for a few more years before we, we get into the championship <laughs> so be it yeah well i mean kind of talking about being smart on the football side i was looking actually it was quite interesting to see that uh you've i mean it, it's pretty impressive, actually, considering thinking about how many managers Sunderland have had over the last ten years or so. But since two thousand and two, you've had eight managers, yeah. um, and five of them have been ex players. I mean, I mean, obviously, there's lots of stories, you know, about Wimbledon going back to the kind of the crazy gang and maybe that kind of following through. But 
I mean, was that kind of a conscious thing or has that just kind of come about because they were there and the kind of best person for the job at the time? Oh, they, 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 there are people out there that, that think it is a conscious thing, but it's, it never has actually been a conscious thing. Yeah, you know, the main the main one who, who who was with us for you know six years was was Neil Ardley. Yeah, Neil Neil from the the people that applied for the job was the best man for the job. Mm. End of story. Absolutely no romance in there whatsoever. <laughs> there was no no way that would have happened. Glenn, who who um, actually had a great record of scoring goals against Sunderland, by the way. Yeah, he yeah. loved it. Never forget the day we knocked you out the cup. Well, we were one nil down in the eighty seventh minute and come back and one two one. That was a, that was a hell of a day. That was. Yeah, I, I was there when you sent us down in uh, in ninety seven as well. Oh, my <laughs> nephew was the mascot that day. Remember you had the streaker. You remember the streaker? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a famous picture when Al Quinn. He doesn't know where to look. <laughs> yeah, well, well, if you look into the background of that photo, there's my six year old nephew going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I think that was his first sexual experience. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's plenty yeah. of people had an experience that day, I can tell you. No, that oh, that was a shocking day. Yeah. I, I I genuinely, you know, look, it takes a football fan to know a football fan. Mm. And the greatest saying in football is that football hurts. Yeah, oh, yeah. And, and football hurts, and and if it don't hurt, you never know the good times, which is why we all kind of laugh at, 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 at the the kind of outpouring of grief when Man United haven't won the league for a few years. <laughs> yeah. Liverpool just keep on winning FA Cups and Champions right. League, but we haven't won the Premier <laughs> League. Like, yeah, most teams win yeah. nothing. Imagine that, yeah. Imagine having those problems. We don't win trophies. It, it, it doesn't work like that. Football's not like that. You know, yeah. most, most football fans don't see their teams win things. You know, that's just the way it is. So, you know, uh, there, 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 there is a, a, a certain ethos around Wimbledon people and we, we, we've won a lot and we've done a lot and we've seen a lot happen uh, and, and the manager side of it it's always been the best person for the job yeah. it, it really has had nothing to do with the fact that they except maybe our first manager Terry Ings when he, when he got put in there was you, you, you might have said that was uh, uh, he was there at the time and it was all done on, on the hoof very quickly and everything so yeah. but other than that you know, the, the others have all been um, very much Appointed to, to do the job, and is it is it five Wimbledon ex Wimbledon players? I think I counted five out of out of the nine. I think, but I might have uh, might have miscounted. Terry Eames, Neil Aldley, um, Wally Downs, Glenn Hodges, and there was one. I think you had as caretaker manager. Ah, uh, Simon Bassey. Yes, Simon Bassey. Well, Simon Bassey n- n- did, didn't play first team for Wimbledon, but he'd been with the club forever. Ah, he, right. he, he, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll throw him in. He's part of the crazy game. Why not? Why not? I think Bass appreciate me saying that about him. He's part of the crazy game. So yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're a long tradition, but it's, it's never been part of the the, the job remit whatsoever. Mm. You know, there've been circumstances around the managers that we've appointed. You know, the fact that we were a small club and our budget was always tiny and everything, you needed people in as well that were that were going to go. Okay, well, we we don't care about this. We're Wimbledon. We're going to do this thing because that's what we always did before. Yeah. We blooded a lot of very, very big noses and much bigger clubs than us on, on several different occasions. We were from a tiny, tiny base, you know, uh, uh, and you know we've, we've always punched above our weight, and uh, and and that's what we're we're going to continue to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was me thinking it was this ro- this romantic notion you were going out looking at <laughs> ex players all the time, but uh, but there you go. Well, let's go at like current day and um, go back to our fixture in December, which we've kind of touched on already in terms of the circumstances around it. But um, it was a really strange game. Obviously, I mean, I think the build up affected kind of both sides really, as you know, Sunderland and and you guys with traveling up and things like that. I mean, but the, the game itself, I mean, it was quite. Um, Kind of quite lethargic game. It was quite slow. I mean, we had seventy percent of the possession, but you had probably had the better chances, if I remember rightly. I mean, yeah, we did. Were, were you in the kind of the management team, the players, all disappointed to only come away with a draw? Yeah, really, because we missed a couple of absolute sitters. Mm. At the end of the day, that 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 cost you if you did. Yeah, trying to hold on to a one nil lead at a place like the Stadium of Light is a difficult thing to do, and against you know some of the players that, that you you you've got because although you had some players out you still feel did a strong side that night and it was very difficult for us you know uh, and we were you know suffering a bit of confidence and so on so it, it, it was a difficult game for us without a doubt but but you know I thought we we battled away really well and and and, and you know at no stage did I feel safe in that game and mm. uh yeah we we I knew we needed another goal and and that's how it, it proved to be but you know yeah. it, it, well I can't tell you that I came back to, to London unhappy 
Yeah, but I mean, I mean, since then though, I mean, you've you've lost the last three, and you haven't won in the league since the second of December when you beat Peterborough at home, um, which means you you can you just uh, inside the relegation zone as we're almost hit the halfway point. I mean, has the recent run been one of them that you you know you get quite often when you're down there that you don't get the rub of the green or, or come up against a you know late volleyed equalizers from centre halves, you know things like that. Yeah, um, it's, all of that. <laughs> it's absolutely all of that, and it's really you know, annoying <laughs> um, but but you know uh the truth of it is that i've already said that i think that the, the covid situation knocked the stuffing out of us mm. and then the, the sheer amount of games that they made us play uh were, were, was horrendous um and, and you know that will happen again um, we know we're going to be playing saturday tuesday saturday tuesday but saturday tuesday thursday sunday wednesday mm. saturday is just too much it's too mm. much you know it, it's going to cost you and you know, we, 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 we've never been a team that hides and we've never been a club that hides. And, you know, we, we turn up around matches, we roll our sleeves up, we do our best in every one of them. Nobody's really taken us apart this season. Mm. You know, we, we've not really been taken apart. You know, I've not come away from any game thinking, oh, you know, and we've played a lot of the top teams and quite frankly, most of them, we, I felt we've matched. You know, I've not felt outclassed many times. You know, the, the worst thing we got was from Bristol Rovers, which mm. just goes to show. The Bristol Rovers and crew both played really well against us. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the problem is with these runs, though, it's it's kind of, you know, when you're you deserve more out of games, but you're not getting that kind of, you know, decision or the ball's not dropping yeah. right for you. It's kind of the longer it goes on, kind of the, the, the worse it gets. But um, I saw you did win in the AFL trophy, you beat Bristol Rovers the other night. Um, so, I mean, in, in your opinion, I mean, is it just a matter of time before you kind of get out of this run and back to where you maybe were before? Kind of yeah, we'll, we'll, it is my opinion that, we'll, that we'll, we'll get back on a good run and we'll be okay. We, we, we've got, I think we've got better players this season than we had last season, but we've had a lot of injuries and a lot to cope with. And, you know, uh, this time the, the kind of break we've had for COVID has, has done us a favour. You know, we, we, we lost two games over the Christmas period, which means that, that, that it feels like it's been very... And then, and then we didn't play last Saturday because of mm. the FA Cup. And that felt like, like that's given us a... A, a break uh, that we we desperately needed. Yeah. Um, so, so by the time we get to the end of January, we should have more players back uh, and and a couple of our more senior heads back in the team, uh, and that that will make a difference to us. So yeah, yeah, you know, it will come to an end, and hopefully it will come to an end on Saturday. But we know that's going <laughs> to be difficult. Yeah. I mean, actually, just that break that you've recently had because yeah, it hadn't before the other night against Bristol Rovers. You hadn't played until uh, since the second of January. I mean, like I right. said, you said that you needed a break, but was that difficult to manage? Because obviously, when the players are coming into the training ground, you've got you've got them kind of under control, if you like. And I, I don't want to mean that in a kind of <laughs> patronising way, but at least you've was it the case that they were still training every day and they were allowed to train, and that that still ran. So yeah, no, they they had a schedule put in, a manager put in. Yeah, you know, we 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 had a couple of days off straight after. Um, our last league game and and then it, it was you know you put a schedule in uh, and that, like you know for instance they were in on Sunday training you know to, to, to get ready for Tuesday night and they're, 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 they'll be doing their work don't worry they'll yeah. they're, be getting plenty <laughs> and um, you know uh, and you know I, I think that, that I was actually pleased with what we did last night um, although they didn't play their their full strength side we far from got our full strength side out there, although it pro- probably was all of the fit Players that could play more or less played. It was probably as you know, as nearer. It was quite near a full lineup um, for what's available. I think that, that that did us a world of good last night. We came out of it strong. Um, a couple of players that we were worried about fitness wise came out of it strong uh, and looked good. So I, I, I think there's a real. Um, we're looking forward to Saturday from a team point of view. Yeah, we are looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, as well, I mean, just the situation you're in or the position you're in in the league. I mean, obviously, we talked you know, a lot about Plough Lane, but just in the context of where you are in the league, I mean, it must be a frustration that you haven't got that kind of 12th man that you, you would have had this season with Plough Lane because, I mean, that would have been bouncing this season. Oh, God, yeah. No, it, it, I mean, it, it, it is ready to explode here from, from you know, as, as much as football it would explode with us. Um yeah, I mean, it, but it's the same for everyone. There, so I, I, I wouldn't want any special treatment on that at all. You know, it is the same for everyone. We've got to get on and make the best of it. And, and, and we will do. Yeah. And, and it'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was looking at um, kind of the former players. And obviously, um, I mean, Joe Piggott seems to be flying up top for you yeah, this season. Uh, already has 11 
Um, whereas our our top scorer, someone familiar to you, Charlie Wake, he's on seven for us. So Joe Pickett's flying up up top. I think uh, I think your next one's got about five goals this season. So the uh, young Longman from um, we got him on loan from Brighton. He's going to be a player. He is, by the way. Yeah, you'll see you'll see him in the Premier League. I'm sure, absolutely certain of it. He really has got he's got loads going for him. Really, really good kid. Really, poor oh dear. Um, we'd like him on a permanent. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid. So yeah, Joe Joe Pickett's done amazingly well, and, and, and again, Joe's Joe's a good lad. And he, you know, we got him from Maidstone mm. for uh, you know for cheapest chips one way and the other, and, and he's done really well. And you know, he, you know, he, he he could quite easily go on, could Joe now? He's one of the players that benefited from the lockdown. He came back leaner and fitter than, than he's been. He's a clean living boy as well, so you know he doesn't drink or anything like that. So all, all he could do in lockdown was was get fit and stay fit. Uh, and, and he obviously embraced that because he came back and it was just like, oh, he, he looks like he's gone up a level here to me. And and, and that's what happened. Yeah. And, it, and it was fantastic. Done really well. Yeah. So, I mean, is, is there anyone else um, who, uh, you know, Lee Johnson and his team is going to be worried about this weekend? The kid that had a great game at Sunderland was was young Jack Radoni. He, mm. One of our own has come through our, our youth team, you know, came through the academy and he scored his first goal last night. He has been threatening to score that goal. <laughs> Mm. He really has. You know, there have been times when he hasn't been out at Cow's arse with a banjo, <laughs> but, but but he's been getting closer and closer. And yeah, you know, keepers have been making the miracle saves. He's hit the post. He's done everything. Uh, last night he got one in, and uh, once he adds in product, he could be anything, Jack. He could be absolutely anything. It would not surprise me at all if he went went all the way. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like you've got a bunch of young players who who are ready to kind of take that step up if they're. I mean, I'm going to see a standard season <laughs> where it's not kind of interrupted. They haven't got all those fixtures because uh, it sounds like they've been held back by that from what you said. Yeah, oh, without without a shadow of a doubt, you know, I, I mean, yeah, the, the COVID thing has, has, you know, held a lot of people up one way and the other and in a lot of professions in a lot of worlds. And, mm-hmm. you know, we're just going to have to, you know, we're just going to have to get on with it and, and, and make the best of everything that we can. And, and they, they, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, that, that the cream will rise to the top, and if we've got good players, they will continue to to rise and rise and rise. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. My my opinion on on this game this weekend. I mean, with Sunderland's form, we we seem to no matter how we play, we seem to just draw games, and, and we drew the game in December. So I mean, the smart money would would be on a draw this weekend, surely, wouldn't it? Without a doubt. But I, I will say this uh, for those who that remember when we played you. The first time in League One, mm. that is one of the biggest robberies of a game that I've ever had as a Wimbledon <laughs> fan. When, 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 um, what was the name of that old Premier League defender that you had? Um, Oviedo. Yeah. When he did the handball on the line, it's the most blatant <laughs> handball I've ever seen in my all my time in football with a referee right in front of him and he never gave it. So, so we should have had a pen and two one down. You should have been two nil down at, at, at that stage and down to ten men because it was a. <laughs> He knew if he gave the penny out to send the player off, just deliberate hand ball on the line, you've got, he's got to go. I, 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 and he didn't give it. He came straight up the other end and scored. And it was just like, that's the worst travesty you know, of a refereeing decision I've, I've ever seen. So we kind of owe you one right now is what we feel. <laughs> you kind of felt you probably owed us one from all those years ago, several times. <laughs> yeah, everyone everyone knows everyone won. Um, but yeah, Oviedo wasn't a bad keeper in his, uh, in his time at Sunderland. About all, it, about all he did in that season, I think. But, uh, but yeah... <laughs> I mean, it's it's a shame uh, we're playing without fans at Plough Lane. It, you know, wintry Saturday game would have been an amazing atmosphere um, and we're all going to um, miss out on it. But are you going to be one of the few who's able to attend? I, I, I'm actually not going now because I, I, first time around I, I had to shield mm. um, and I uh, had a, a lot of letters and phone calls from uh, various people saying that I should be doing that again. Mm. And, and as much as I don't feel like doing it... Um, I'm going to have to knuckle down and and be a good boy, and I mm. just got just going to have to be a good boy and get on with it. Yeah, goes against the grain to be honest with you, but 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 from but but for me because I I I was going to games, but I I I can't tell you um, how much I want to get this jab so I can get yeah. back to you know uh, uh, as we all do. Um, but but from for now, it's better safe than sorry. We'll play Sunderland again. You know, you might get promoted this year. You know, you might not. I happen to think that Lee Johnson's a really good manager. I think he'll do well for you. I said the same thing when I was on last time. I know about Parky. I like Parky. <laughs> I still like Parky. I think Parky's a hard-working, decent manager. I do. He just didn't fit. He didn't fit with Sunderland one way and other. He's, you know, he's, he's, he's had a reasonable record 
elsewhere. And as a bloke, I, I, I think it's top draw. I, mm. I really do. I, I, and I think that Lee Johnson uh, as, as well, you know, um, he comes from a great football family. His uncle, who, who's no longer with us, unfortunately, but his uncle was a, a scout for us. So, 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 we, you know, and, and, and they were quite, they were local to us too. So mm. we kind of got, got to know the family a little bit and they are a great football dynasty. And I, I think he, I think he's going to turn into a top manager, and I hope he does it with you, not because you know you you de- you de- deserve that level of success. That'd be fantastic. Yeah, I'll take that. Well, it sounds you know, I mean, obviously you want to be there, but it it sounds sensible and a bit of patience now. I'm sure you'll have a plenty more good days at Plough Lane to to come. And and other than the results, I hope you have a a fantastic uh, weekend um, watching it from wherever you're going to watch it from your home or wherever. But I hope you have a fantastic weekend watching it, and it's a, it's a good game for everyone, regardless of the result. Yeah, and 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 just rest assured, all you Sunderland fans, football hurts. It really hurts, but it will come <laughs> back, and, and you will fly again. Uh, and and it might take you a little while to get back to the Premier League. Just enjoy the ride and enjoy following your football club because it's a fantastic football club and a credit to the community. And we always get a great welcome when we go up there, uh, and, and we love it. So. Uh, yeah, that's the most important thing. Yeah, I can hear all the Sunderland fans who are listening going, uh, yeah, nodding their heads going, you're preaching at the converted here. We, we, <laughs> I think we're, we've been hurt enough, I think, over the last, uh, well, as far back as I can remember, that's for sure. We've all been through that and that's why it makes those those moments of joy e- even better. And, you know, trust me, you know, with what happened with us, you know, losing your football club altogether, trust me, there is nothing worse than that. That, that, that I will say. So you, you guys... Yo, you crack on, get behind the club uh, as much as you can. And I hope these new owners work out well for you and you crack on. And if these owners don't work out well for you, give me a bell. I'll come up and, and form you into a fans group and, and you take that club over properly and, and off we go. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we could well be ringing you on the phone. We'll see how this next takeover goes. This is the ne- conveyor belt of Sunderland owners. We'll see how they go. It'll work this time. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Well, I'd like to say thank you very much, Ivor. We, we really appreciate your time. Pleasure. Anytime. Yeah, all the best for the season. So thanks again for everyone listening. I'm sure we'll be along very soon after the final whistle with the, the Player Ratings pod on Saturday. Uh, but from us, it's bye for now. 